Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all of the praises and the glory to the Most High and His Son. Yahweh Bashmi Shai Bashem Rukah Pradash. Double honors to that apostles and including the bishops on down that have taught me this truth through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashmi Shai. And um, Yahweh Bashmi Shai Shai Brakatham to the 140 and 4,000. And as well as the one third that listen. And it's your brother Laban. Once again, coming at you with another video in regards to this video over here, which was done by Deacon Haka Gawayam, if, if I'm correct, that's how you pronounce his name. And in this video, as you can see by the title of the video, you know, he straightforwardly lies and um, says what he says in this live lesson. And, um, you know, which really it isn't a lesson. It's just him just spewing out his foolishness. Because obviously the previous videos that he did, in terms of you know Alazar's concern, because that's what we all did. We all responded back to Alazar and what he was saying on how he didn't find the Apostle Paul's writings reputable. So he did a live re-explaining in his words in great detail that he didn't actually mean that he meant something else, but it need not explanation because it was plainly said that they don't see. Paul's writings to be of a reputable source, all right? So, you know, he does another video in responding to what we've said. You know, that wasn't really good enough. And then he tries to break down 2nd Ezra, the 11th chapter and the 12th chapter, and he felt on that regard. So now, this is probably his third or fourth live that he's doing. And he's just straight lying because he doesn't have anything to speak about in regards to us. So what I want to do is, is I want to read the first scripture. In the book of Exodus 20 and verse 16, as this reads, Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. And last of my check, if, 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 if my memory serves me correctly, um, I'm quite certain that this group, as you know, Alazar would, would tell you that they find the Torah and as well as the Old Testament more reputable than the New Testament. That's what they morally believe in. So if they believe in the law and the prophets, which, you know, if I'm if I'm really being honest, I would look at these guys and say that these guys are Old Testament um, Israelites to say the least, but they're not going to come out and really explain that because they don't want to tell the truth on that regard. You know, I don't know why that, that's not the case, but, you know, I would say, and this is just me guessing, you know, I believe they don't really believe in 60% of that, which is of the, um, the New Testament, because I've heard that they don't even agree with certain books of Mark. They've already said they don't agree with the writings of Paul and, and many other things that I've heard about this group, you know, and it's kind of confusing because when I responded to um, Alazar's um, video that he did and explaining why I think they don't really agree with the Apostle Paul's writing because it has every little thing to do with the fact that um, he would have to shave off all of his hair to make it short and this guy wouldn't be seen wearing a hat. So, you know, these are nothing more than Americanized Israelites that haven't been born again, that haven't come into this truth in the, in the fullness thereof. So, you know, these are what you call um, individuals that are straddling the fence. This is the straddling the fence group. OK. And again, you know, I want to go back to what I meant by why it's confusing, because they say that they don't find Paul's writings reputable. But um, when I did the video in responding to Alazar, there was a, a guy that was young in the in the, uh, the faith, as I believe he is. He's probably a member of the of the uh, the Sakari camp. Otherwise, he wouldn't have went on my comment board posting precepts. And um, the precepts were really Paul's precepts that he was posting on my comment board. So that to me, I don't get that. I don't understand that because if the leaders don't agree with certain writings then why would their members post these writings on the comment boards of, um, of you know, of members of Great Millstone, such as my, uh, my channel, 
Why would they do that if they don't believe that Paul's writings are credible? I'm just saying. So anyway, in regards to this video here, let's let's read this again and we're going we gonna to get back on, on par with what, what needs to be said through the Spirit. Exodus 20 and verse 16. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Right? So this is a law that they need to be upholding because they believe that the Torah and as well as the New Testament is, is credible. So why is this individual doing out a flat out live lying on Great Millstone saying that we teach the hell doctrine? If you don't do X, Y, and Z according to what we say, then you're going to burn in hell. Whenever has a GMS member said something like this? Where's the proof? Where's the evidence of this stuff? Because if there's no proof, no, there's evidence, then it's just straight lies at this point. Okay? And again, this is a once again pathetic comeback to come back against us to say that, um, you know, we're going off and we're doing this and we sold out, etc., etc., because the previous lives that he's done, again, hasn't been good enough. All right? This individual doesn't have anything on us. None of these camps have anything to say bad against us. To say that we're going off on the scriptures. They can't, they can't, they don't, they don't have that information. What they do know is, is that we're very scripturally based camp. <laughs> That's what everybody knows in Israel. All right. So because he doesn't have anything on us, now he's going to flat out do a lie, just straight lying. All right. Let's read the scripture over here. This is 2 Thessalonians 5 and um, verse 21. Prove all things and hold fast that which is good. Um, Salakia, this is the one over here. Just to fast forward a little bit. This reads, blame not before thou hast examined the truth. Understand first and then rebuke. So all of this, if this is done, this comes under the intention of being a true witness. Not being a false witness. All right, which goes all the way back to the law. So if you're not doing that, then you're in violation of the law, which you claim to believe, Alazar and Haka Gawayam of the Sakari camp. Okay. So now let's read some more precepts. Let's even read this now. Proverbs uh, 19 and uh, verse 5 to verse 8. A false witness shall not be unpunished, and he that speak of lies shall not escape. As it is written, every idle word that man shall speak shall give an account on the day of judgment. Verse 8. Salakia. Uh, let me see, because there's something else in this as well, which says quite similar to what I just read. Let me see something real quick. Uh, yeah, false witness. Yeah, we, we got that. So now let's even read. Yes, verse 9. There you go. Verse 9. A false witness shall not be unpunished, and he that speak of lies shall perish. So this will be the case if, if you continue to lie. This is going to be the fate of those that continue to preach in the spirit of falsehood. Let's even get Revelations um, 21. This will be the ultimate fate of those that are under the influence of lies. But the fearful and the unbelieving and the abominable and the murderers and the whoremongers and sorcerers, which lying is a form of sorcery as well, and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burned with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So lest these guys repent, these guys are going to be nuclearized. See, we teach that. That's what we teach. Okay, we don't teach this pseudo notion that one will burn in hell. For eternity because you didn't do what we said accordingly to this scripture and that scripture. We don't teach that. What we teach is, is if you don't repent, America's going to be destroyed and you're going to be destroyed with it. That's what we do teach. Now, that's the hell that's coming to those that don't repent. All right. And you might be caught up in that kind of hell. OK, we don't believe in that nonsense. And you know this. So rather than um, trying to find the evidence and then build a, an actual case, you're going to just go right in the head and lie. 
So, you know, as we've always been saying, man, you Sakari guys, um, I'm not saying all these because some of you may be very well um, sincere out of all of these camps that are outside of GMS. You might have members that may very well be sincere in what they believe in according to what they've been taught. And if the Lord is with them, they'll come out of these groups and they'll they'll join Great Millstone. And if not, they can do their own thing and teach the real truth the way that we teach it. Which would still be good. So, you know, if you guys don't repent and cut this, this foolishness out, you guys are going to be destroyed. You guys are going to be nuclearized when those nukes hit America. And um, that's going to be the end all be all of, of all of this folly. That's going to be the end all and be all of being foolish because this is foolishness. Now, you see us at Great Millstone, we're not going to do a video if we don't have any evidence of a thing that we speak on. We're not going to lie because we know that there's repercussions of that. And, we, and I just read you the repercussions. So we're not going to go out our way and, and make up things because we feel like we should. And it's all to do with ego. Because we have a point to prove. We got to prove that we're right and we have a name to uphold in that kind of spirit. We're not doing that. All right. And we're not motivated by money. So by the fact that you're saying, according to the, the title of your, um, your, your, uh, your video, saying that we sold out. The truth is, is that you wish that you could say that we sold out. Like. There was a, a video that this individual did, man, talking about how we should go and debate them. And we'll be given $1,000 or something like that. See, that's how you guys think. You guys are motivated by money. We're not motivated by money. What motivates us is the fear of the Lord, one. Number two, what motivates us is the spirit of the Lord. That's what we're inspired by. And you guys know this. All right? You know what we go straight by the book, <laughs> okay, because that's what we're inspired by. We're in the spirit of the book. You see what I'm saying? So that's that's what that is. So now what I want to do is I want to um read a different scripture. Let's get the book of um. No, let's go back and read this. And I want to read a different verse. Yeah. Let's read verse twenty-two. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Let's look up this word abstain in the Greek. Strong's G 567. Apechamai. Apechamai. Thayer's lexicon. Apecho. Apecho. All right. So the, the word means to hold oneself off, restrain, excuse me, refrain or abstain. So that's that's all we got. It just means to hold oneself off. And that's something that a wise man would do because a wise man will fear. Let's see if I can get that. That's Proverbs, I think, is 14 and 16, man. Uh, Proverbs 4, there it is. Proverbs 14 and 16. Here we have it. A wise man feareth and departeth from evil, but the fool rageth and is company. So yes. So when it reads and what is it? First Thessalonians 5 and verse 20, if I'm correct, where it says abstain from all evil. That's something that a wise man is going to do because a wise man is going to what? Depart from evil. When you're lying about something or somebody, guess what? You're bringing evil, especially if you're bearing false witness to your neighbor. That brings evil. OK, so a wise man is going to be really considerate of whether he's going to do something uh, right. A wise man is going to be considerate and he's going to do that, which is right. OK, so now let's read this again. A wise man fear of and departed from evil, but the fool rage of and is confident. Exactly. A fool just acts on the lust side of himself. He doesn't think he just responds and, and reacts because of something bad that happened to him or maybe his ego was violated. So he has to respond and react with foolishness. And he doesn't think of the result which is going to come out of the nonsense that he's going to wind up doing until later on and then later on he'll begin to think that he should have never done it but the damage was already done 
by then. All right. So this is the thing. Like you got to be circumspect out here. You got to be um, sober minded, which means to be sensible. It doesn't always mean to be not drunk. It also means to be sensible. So let me even get that as well. Let's go back to um, 1 Thessalonians 5 on that to show you what I mean. Um, as the scripture says, prove all things, right? So that's what we're going to do instead of just flattening out lying. Um, let me see if... Yeah, I think it's somewhere around here. Yeah, this is it right here. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 8, but let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love for an helmet and the hope of salvation. And what is the day? The day is talking about Jacob's day. So we're supposed to move like we got some damn sense out here, man, and putting and also being faithful. So now let me look up that word sober. In the Greek, NAFO, I believe it is. Strong's G, 3525. NAFO. NAFO. Right. Exactly what I said. To be sober, to be calm and collected in the spirit. To be temperate, dispassionate, circumspect. Right. Because when you're passionate, right, again, you're raging. You're raging. So when you control your passion or your emotion, you're able to what? Move sensibly. You're able to act sensibly. Okay? And also be in circumspect. Being aware what you do and what the reactions of those things that you do can bring about. So this right here was just an act on one's flesh. Because these guys are fleshy. These guys ain't really in the spirit. Now, what I will say is, is again, these guys are intelligent. They got that. They know the scriptures, but they're not in the spirit of the scriptures. And that's where the problem lies. All right. So that's all I have to say with that. I want to give all of the praises and the glory to the Most High and His Son, Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rakak, Wadash. And with that, I close. Shalom. And P.S., just to add, this and this is um second Timothy 3 and verse 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of the most high, and it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Because he mentioned that um something to the equivalent of Paul has his law, and then you have the laws, right? And what Paul basically said, just on everything that he said in the various books that you can read of him. Um, realistically speaking, man, it's credible because for one, let's just do what is written in the book of Acts 9. Yahweh Shai gave him the authority and chosen him to be a vessel to spread the gospel unto the Israelite foreigners who was called the Gentiles. So let's just put that straight. And then we also got to include that his name was later changed from being Saul to that of Paul. Why is that? Because he was going to be the mouth of the Lord towards the people that he was going to encounter, spreading the words of the Lord, simply put. So once again, um, the Apostle Paul's writings and whatever he said, we can take it just as seriously as what every other prophet said. So with that, I close. Shalom.